In this video, we'll look at Charles' Law, the relationship between temperature and volume. So we can explore Charles' Law, the relationship between volume and temperature, with our gas simulator. I've opened the simulator, and here I find that the pressure is about an atmosphere, and the temperature is about 200 Kelvin, and for this particular number of gas particles, the volume comes out to be about 660 liters. So let's see what happens if we lower the temperature. So if I cool it down here, I can lower the temperature down to about 100 Kelvin. And when I do, I see that the volume is decreased. And in fact, it's about half of what it was before because the temperature is roughly half what it was. If I go back up, I can go back to 200 and I should be where I was. And if I crank the temperature up to say 250, um, now we see that the volume has increased further, and in fact, we'll see that the volume is directly proportional to the temperature. So if I was in a lab like this, and I had some piston under constant pressure, I could simply change the temperature of the system and then measure the volume that it had. And these were the experiments that Charles did. So now I could do an experiment where I measured the volume as a function of temperature, and at each temperature, I would see as the temperature went down, the volume got lower and lower. But let's imagine as I did these experiments that maybe I got here to zero degrees C and I wanted to keep going. I could get the gas colder and colder, but at some point it's going to be very hard to do these experiments because now it's getting extremely cold. Nonetheless, I can follow the relationship that volume and temperature have, and I can extrapolate the data out to those points. If I do that, I can imagine that the volume is going down and down and down and down here in a linear relationship, and even down at these temperatures where I can't measure things, I can extrapolate the line. And I'll see that there is a temperature at which we predict the gas will have zero volume. Now that temperature is a very special temperature, and we'll say that that's absolute zero. That is, the temperature can't go any lower than that, or the gas would have a negative volume. But we can't have negative volumes. The smallest the volume could be is zero, which means there is a temperature that is the smallest the temperature can be. In Celsius units, that's minus 273.15. Which is zero degrees in some scale that we'll call Kelvin. And this is so called absolute zero, or the lowest temperature that we can get to. And we would predict that the gas at this temperature would have zero volume. So, what Charles found was that at conditions around typical atmospheric conditions, say one atmosphere, volumes of most gases are proportional to the temperature. So this little symbol here means proportional to. And remember that proportional simply means that the volume is equal to some constant times the temperature. So the volume is related to the temperature, not any old temperature, but in fact the absolute temperature. So that is the temperature on our Kelvin scale. And proportionality means the two are equal to one another if we multiply by some constant. Now, is this true all the time, or is this exact? No, this was sort of the typical behavior that they found in the lab. Um, and it is from these conditions that we end up deriving the ideal gas law. And so we know that it's not true all the time, but it does a pretty good job of modeling gas behavior. So what do we learn from Charles' law? Volume proportional to temperature. Double the temperature, double the volume. Have the temperature, have the volume. But we have to be talking about absolute temperature, temperature measured in Kelvin.